They had to wait for a bit on the roof before Victoria returned, carrying sealed documents. On her heels was the stockade's captain, along with a regular city guard. Right, boys and girls, these two will be accompanying us to ensure everything is done properly and by the book, Victoria let out, sounding very pleased with herself. Balathon, if you want to return to the infirmary, you may do so. We have a new sniffer. Captain Bashal here felt impartiality was required on that front. You are the prosecutors in the latest case against the Flaxen family. I do hope you understand the precaution, the captain went, in a very respectful tone directed at Dakota. No, I understand. It is only right, Dakota replied with a polite nod. Um, what about Victoria? Tigwan asked, looking at her confused. Really? You just had to ask that? Sapphire questioned to herself, looking at the dragon and trying not to let her annoyance show. I am technically still in charge of the Royal Guard investigation of the allegations against Miss Marty Keep, of which Lady Flaxen and her family is very much a part. Though the good captain has agreed to provide additional oversight for a bit of added credibility to our findings, should there be any. You coming, Balathon? If Tigwan is fine with it, I wouldn't mind coming along, Balathon replied, clawing at the ground a bit. Sapphire drew a slight smile. Yeah, just seeing the faces of those Flaxen bastards should be worth the trip. Um, sure. Tigran answered after a bit, realising it was his answer they were waiting for. Very well, you two mount up then. Same free wing formation as before, everyone. Victoria continued, looking around at everyone. Yilts, you know the way, right? Oh yeah, I do, the lieutenant replied in a cocky tone. Do I have to look scary for this one? Tigran asked, clearly not thrilled with the prospect. Not until we get there, but yeah, that would be helpful if you wouldn't mind. No, I get it, I'll do it, Tigran replied looking off the side of the roof for a second with a bit of a sigh. Now, Ray, remember, these are bad people, so we are going to be scary. You just do your best to hold it together. You don't have to say anything. I'm sure Tigwan here will protect you, Sapphire went, trying her best to sound reassuring. No one is getting hurt on my back. That's just not happening, Tigwan added. If they are as bad as you say they are, then I will scare them. They're not bad at you, okay? The dragon tried, looking straight at Ray, who Sapphire could feel shrink down under the dragon's gaze. Hey, if you need a reason to be mad at them, you're dealing with incestuous murderers and kidnappers, Balathon let out in a distinctly unimpressed tone as he walked over to Tigwan. Don't forget, they tried to label us traitors too. They could have wiped out the entire keep if it had stuck. I'll show no quarter to those who tried to kill my kids and burn my home, Dakota stated very plainly, looking at the dragon. Oh, and the bribery, Balathon added, as he beat his wings to make it onto Tigwan's back. The dragon, lowering a wing for Ray. Sapphire leading the woman up before jumping back down again herself. Yes, that too, Balathon, Dakota replied, shaking her head a bit. I always feel a little offended that the sights of my own, barons in the Royal Guard's honour, weren't mentioned, Victoria added, but there was a little humour in her voice, which vanished as she glanced around the roof. We ready to depart? She received no protest to indicate otherwise. Turning to Tigua, she gave the dragon a nod. Lead on, then. Don't ride him too hard, he's not from around here. Oh, so God's changed depending on where you are from? Good to know, Quinn replied, sarcasm heavy in her voice. She had been less than pleased to learn that Ton didn't in fact know a lot about the gods around here. And when he admitted he didn't really believe in the ones he knew about either, she had launched into a full lecture. Looking back, this was definitely the wrong time to have said that. In his defence, he had just downed a flask of whiskey, so he was at least a little drunk, which did also help with weathering the storm. Oh, God, let it end, Tom cursed himself. He just wanted to make a light-hearted joke, not spark a religious argument. The gods preside over the world, I know that. You don't need to score me in that, Unkai protested, having taken Tom's side. Oh, so what are you suggesting? That he isn't even from this world? Um, Unkai let out, sounding like he just realised he said too much. You have got to be shitting me, Quinn finally replied. Do not say a word. It goes for all of you. Unkai ordered, with a surprising amount of authority in his voice all of a sudden. Can we leave the debate for when I'm not dying? Tom tried, hoping to switch the subject. He could worry about the wrong people figuring him out later. Hell, the people here seem trustworthy enough anyway. Right, sorry. I'm not sure there's much we can do, though. Unless you want to risk trying some of the alcohol already here. Your liver is just going to be chugging away. Slowly, you know? Yeah, I'm kidding myself right now. I got that. Why don't you just try and slow down his liver? Like if you were putting someone into hibernation? Quinn let out, as if a brainwave had just hit her. You can do that? Ungai questioned. Don't you have to, you know, do the whole thing? Sure you can, your training isn't complete, is it? She questioned in a very unimpressed tone. 
No, Ungar replied, sounding rather ashamed of himself. Also, not to spoil anything, but he's not a dragonette. Can it even be done with someone warm-blooded? When in doubt, throw magic at the problem. Tom let out, throwing his arms into the air. The whole thing would kill him for sure. Might be able to do it with parts, though. Move over, I'm going to try and see if this works. If you live, you will give your prayers to Kalador. Quinn, he saved everyone here. Just get on with it and don't kill him. One of the wounded dragonets interrupted from one of the other beds. Quinn replied with annoyed, How rumpf! A word of warning. I haven't done this on whatever you are, so it might be dangerous. Actually, yeah, this is probably extremely dangerous. Tom tried doing the math in his head, which just gave him more of a headache. Fuck it. It was likely this or trying to guess where the methanol had come from, which he had no idea how to do. Chuck it on the bad idea list and hope for the best. He needed more time. Are you going to be putting me to sleep or just a liver, so to speak? I'm going to try and put you into hibernation. Just the liver, though. I think if I try all of you, then you just freeze to death. Might be rough on the liver, but that should be fixable in time. If it doesn't end up too far gone. That sounds reassuring. Sure, go ahead. Good luck making it worse. Tom, are you sure? Ungai tried, clearly not convinced by the idea. Best case scenario, they are back here in, what, 12 hours? It's likely going to be more than that, even if I'm still alive by then. I don't think it will be in time. Ungai let out some rather distressed noises in reply, but didn't push it further. Quinn's hands were cold to the touch, as she rolled him over onto one side, placing them on his belly and lower back. Tom felt kind of cold inside too, uncomfortably so in fact. It felt like a lump of ice was forming in his belly or something, and it definitely wasn't painless either. Would you know if it's working? Unko questioned. Wouldn't he get better? Quinn replied, the concentration clear in her tone. Don't think so, maybe a little, but that will take a long time. It definitely feels strange though, Tom admitted, fighting the considerable pain. Why didn't you just say you could do this, then Jackie could have stayed? We didn't send her, Tom, she ran off. Ungai clarified, sounding a tad annoyed. It won't fix it either, even if you might be able to pee a bit out of it. Then get him more water. The bastard is fighting back. Right, Ungai went, getting a canteen of water. Drink like Shiva is winning, he went, clearly trying to lift the mood a bit. Why can't things just be easy for a change? Tom went, as he took the canteen, drinking as much as he could. Because you're a damn heretic, that's why. Kalador, Lord of Light and Healing, Please bless this ignorant heretic, despite his wrongful ways, and guide him to the light. For despite his sins, he deserves the gift of life. Quinn replied in an annoyed tone, but clearly concentrating on something now. Tom promised himself not to bring up gods in life-threatening situations ever again, as he continued to try and drink more water. And someone could be heard slowly walking up the stairs outside the infirmary. How is he doing? Jerry's wants to know rather badly, the old lady questioned cautiously. He's sad, drunk and a heretic, but possibly not dying. Quinn dismissed her in a hard tone. Luke, could you tell him that for me, darling? Sure thing, Mum, Luke replied in a kind voice, even if the unease was rather easy to pick out. Tom drew a breath to shout out so Jerris could hear, being stopped by Ungai, who put a hand over his mouth. Don't do that, just lie still, Ungai pleaded. He's going to be fine, Jerris, don't worry, he then shut it out. Thanks, bro. Next question, does the liver do blood sugar things? Your blood is sugar in it? Ungai questioned, followed by a few seconds of silence. It didn't taste sweet. What the hell, dude? Tom let out, receiving an annoyed growl from Quinn. As an ice-cold shot of pain went through his abdomen, Tom tried his best not to gasp. Lay still, damn you. It was on my fingers, okay? I was curious, Ungai replied in a cautious tone. I think he is talking about how much energy is in his blood, Quinn added, voice still heavy with concentration. Sure, that works, Tom replied, gritting his teeth. God, this was uncomfortable. I don't really know, would it? Quinn questioned, seemingly directed to the room. I could get him something fast burning, white bread perhaps. We have a little honey in the stores too, the old lady tried, voice heavy with worry. I think that could work, Unko replied. Might help with getting him to drink more too, but he really needs his alcohol. We have the wine and ale, the lady tried again. Yes, but one of those did this. We've been over this, Quinn replied. Something about being stored or made weird. There was a bit of silence before the lady spoke up again. So, something else might work. We could get another cask of ale. If it doesn't have methanol in it, then yes it would, Tom clarified. But we have no way to test for that. I say we just go for slowing down his liver as much as we can. That will make the current dose last longer and then we get him to pee out as much as possible. Unkai went, sounding a bit more confident. It 
Better do something, we can't keep this up forever. Unkai, do you think you could take over it a bit? Um, uh, I have no idea how to do that. I never try putting just a part of someone into hibernation, the male healer replied, confidence once again diminished. God damn it, don't we have something for you to practice on, a pig or something? They killed all the animals when they arrived, the lady replied, with deep sorrow in her voice. I'll do it, Calix added from somewhere. Tom wasn't really sure. If it gets me out of scrubbing floors, that is. The kid was sounding way too cheerful at that. False cheer. He knew the risk of doing that. No, you don't, Tom demanded, receiving another step of pain for his troubles. Like you can stop me, Calix replied, Khalid trying to sound confident. Lay down next to him. Tom, I'm going to stop for a second to show Unkai how, okay? Tom didn't respond. He didn't want to. That kid was, what, 13 or something? First Jackie, now a kid who had only just met him a day or so ago. Don't worry, he will be fine and so will you. We just need to buy time, Quinn tried, switching to a reassuring tone. He damn well better be, Tom cursed, without saying a word. Do it for Jackie. She's going to make it. Do it for Kieran. You promised. Tiguan, you are going to be coming down centre. We flank him. Everyone try to look scary. Not a problem, Dakota replied in a cold tone. Gonna be hard not to look smug, Sapphire mused to herself, as they approached the rather impressive looking mansion. It was definitely smaller than the Hashor estate, but it was lavishly decorated and practically screamed wealthy. The estate even included the rather absurd addition of a tall fence, as if to deter intruders or something. Sapphire just shook her head a bit. Seriously, those people tried to bribe us with 500 gold, Dakota went, as they came in for a landing outside the big front gate. Looks like they could have gone for 5,000. I'm guessing they didn't take us that seriously then. Either that, or they believed the court case was going to be cheaper. Well, that was their mistake, not ours, Dakota replied with an evil grin, as she looked around at the assembled formation. The look on the guards' faces when Tiguan sat down, flanked by the royal guard, the city guard, and Saffron Dakota, was most definitely worth the trip. They looked ready to piss themselves. Good morning, I'm here to see the lady of the house, Victoria went, walking up to the two unlucky bastards at the gate, focusing on the guy and leaving the woman to try and face down the assembled forces before her. Sorry ma'am, but the lady isn't here at the moment. Would you want another member of the family? The guy responded, as politely as could be expected in his situation. Why would the lady not be home at such an early hour? This is a serious matter which requires her attention. Sapphire was doing her damnedest not to smile, as Victoria kept a perfectly calm and serious expression. Oh, come on, just say it. The lady is currently unavailable for a prolonged period. She's away on business. God damn, it's so close. Sapphire cursed slightly. Oh, business. I was under the impression she was currently being held in custody awaiting trial. I recommend not lying to me again. Victoria continued, not missing a beat, taking the step closer and looking down at the guard. It would not end well for you. So are you hiding something else from me? No, ma'am, never. Is there anyone else I can get for you? How about all of them? Victoria went, her voice going hard. The guard seemed to get the message as he shrank down, nodding, before scampering outside. With only one guard remaining, Victoria turned her attention to her. So, have you seen anything you want to share with us? Perhaps certain people have been out and about in the early hours of the morning. No, ma'am, I've been here all morning. No one has come in or out. The guard responded back, looking straight ahead. Interesting. Are you absolutely sure about that? I feel I should repeat that lying to me would be an exceedingly bad idea. I understand, ma'am. I am a colonel. I will be addressed as such. Of course. No, colonel. I have seen nothing this morning. I swear it. I do not believe you. Has someone pray for you that I am wrong? It was hard to judge fear for a helmet, but Sapphire felt fairly certain that the guard was more than a little scared right now, as she looked up to Tiguan who, to his credit, was doing a rather nice job of putting on a nasty-looking snarl. Ray was still on his back, along with Balathon. The two of them were nearly obscured behind Tigran's raised head. Ray was clearly nervous as hell, but Balathon appeared to at least be helping her a little. They stood there, waiting patiently, all staring down the lone female guard, who, to her credit, held her ground admirably, despite her opposition. Sapphire had been hoping to see an entire line of fancy-looking nobles marched out in front of them, Instead, she got two funny dressed women coming down the steps from the mansion towards the gate, with a few more guards acting as escorts. The two women did look rather fancy and very much not pleased as they stopped on the other side of the gate. The younger of the two also seemed rather familiar. Isn't that the one who tried to bribe us? Sapphire questioned, leaning over to talk to Dakota in a hushed tone. Yup, Dakota asked plainly, staring daggers at the two of them. Victoria Shaw, we were wondering when we would have to deal with you and your little posse. 
the order of the two women went, stepping forward. There is going to be a court case and we will apparently be seeing most of you there, the woman continued, shooting a look at Sapphire and Dakota, which did lead to Sapphire cracking a slight smile. So quit posturing, try to intimidate us with a dragon that wouldn't harm a cripple, and go away. Well, today's agenda is actually regarding something more recent. To whom am I speaking? You are in the presence of Jamelia Flaxen, one of the guards, helpfully clarified, gesturing towards the woman while bowing slightly. Very well, Victoria replied, holding up the fancy looking document. You are to be investigated on suspicion of involvement in an attempted kidnapping. More accurately, the charges are attempted kidnapping and attempted murder by proxy. I believe that is what it says anyway, Victoria replied, presenting the document to the lone guard outside the gate, who respectfully took it and passed through the iron bars to the fancy woman inside. The Flaxen women glanced over the document for a second, before looking rather confused and actually going over it in detail, her expression turning exceedingly angry. How dare you make such allegations? Captain Bashelm, do you have any idea what kind of harm this could cause? It's bad enough you keep our lady locked up as if she would flee prior to her trial, and Colonel Victoria has sure. Did the Royal Guard always start bullying good people into submission out of the courts? Have you no respect for proper proceedings? Sapphire braced herself for the return fire as Victoria took a step back from the gate, but she replied with perfect calm. Since your family is already guilty of insulting both my family and the Royal Guard, I shall refrain from further comments. I'm here under the authority of both my station and the city guard. As of this night, a kidnapping attempt was thwarted, and your family has been declared prime suspects. Since both your family and the ones targeted are central to the case I'm currently overseeing, not to mention one of my own crew being involved, I am effectively ordered to include this in my investigation of the allegations you placed against Miss Marty Keep. Submit to your investigation immediately. This is not a request. We will have your rank stripped for this, Ashore. The flax woman replied, stepping back and gesturing for the guards to open the gate with a fearsome look on her face. Her attempt at intimidation was rather ruined by Tigran snapping at her with a deep growl. That sent two of the guards inside the fence backing up a few paces before they gathered up the carriage to open up the gate. Sapphire's smile just grew a little wider until she got it back under control. It wouldn't do to laugh, and she needed to remember what these pieces of shit had done. They were here to ruin these people for all the pain they had inflicted and they will be merciless. So then, Colonel, are you here to search for our cellars, or do you want to d dig up our gardens? The old woman went, clearly trying to put as much venom into her voice as she can manage. No, that won't be necessary. I want every family member lined up out front immediately. Yeltz has a list, so I do mean everybody. Those not present are to be accounted for, so they may be investigated when possible, Victoria stated, in no uncertain terms. The old woman scowled at Victoria for a few seconds. Abilene? Please take those two inside and start rounding people up. We are apparently to stand inspection, the older lady went, turning to the flaxen that Sapphire and Dakota knew while gesturing the rear pair of guards. So, what exactly are you planning, Colonel? The older woman questioned, turning back to Victoria as the younger woman went inside with the two guards at a leisurely pace. Oh, we are going to be having a good sniff of everyone here, that's all. I want you to line up abreast, and we are going through the mansion while you lot are out here. Nice and simple. How fitting. Ashore wants a parade. <laughs> 